the first paper uh, which will be presented on uh, POLED displays RGB T95 lifetime performance of inkjet printed second order cavity OLED displays devices uh, by Wilson Richard from uh, Cambridge Display Technology Limited. Okay, first of all, I'd like to thank the uh, committees for inviting CDT to give a, an update on our work on inkjet printed OLED, POLED devices and, and the materials. Um, this work is has been conducted in our God Manchester facilities just north of Cambridge by the inkjet printing team of CDT, which com comprises of Dan Forsyth, Elia Grizzy, Adam Strevens, Graham Anderson, Jonathan Isaacs, William Young, and Jeremy Burrows. And they've asked me to come along to Sid this year and uh, present on their behalf. So the overview of today's talk, I'll start with... Uh, um, first of all, giving you some background as to what we've, we, what we've presented in previous years on our um, improved inkjet printed device performances. I'll then go on to talk about color tuning of these devices using microcavity structures, and then um, go on to discuss and, and address some of the challenges of using printing in association with microcavity devices. Then finally, with the results of RGB devices in fully printed with microcavities, and then uh, complete with the over over outlook and the summary. So last year at SID, um, the team presented that we, we, we now achieved a parity in performance between spin-coated test cells and inkjet-printed test devices. The way we've done this is to utilize what we're calling the, the double-bank um, substrate structure. Or, and this, this includes two, two banks, uh, there is a first bank down here, in, which contains the hill, and then a second bank on top, which is used to contain the interlayer and LEP. Now, the important feature of this double bank structure is that it prevents there to be shorts between this corner of the hill and the cathode, and those shorts had in the past created a leakage path for current and therefore reduced the efficiency of our devices. The second benefit of this double bank, hill, uh, double bank structure is that it eliminates the need for one of the process steps, uh, CF4 plasma treatment. That CF4 plasma treatment had been required to contain uh, some of the layers, but because we can now use materials with the desired properties, we don't need to use that treatment, and that treatment had previously been shown, again last year, to be a source of contamination and, a reduction, and causing a reduction in lifetime. So color points are clearly very important for, uh, for TV applications. And the, the, the graph on the right here shows the, the NTSC color gamut, the sRGB color gamut, and where our sort of standard materials would sit in a non-cavity non optimized device. So what, what people are doing to, in, in order to improve the color of, the, of a display is either to use color filters or to use a stronger optical cavity device. And it's the, the use of the stronger optical cavity that I'll be focusing on today. So the microcavity device structure that we're using 